Taking notes isn't a game to collect the most number of notes or amount of information. That's why we have Google. It should be about learning. So if you're interested in figuring out how to learn better, then stick around because in this video, I'm going to be talking about my five-step learning framework that has helped me learn better, faster. But first, we need to talk about when this system might not work. Personally, I love reading history and economics books, and in the past, I would take detailed notes on them. But then it started feeling like a chore to even read these books. I had to be okay with the idea that you can consume content for fun without trying to be a master at it or making money from it. For this video, I'm going to be using my latest obsession as an example. It's a dance called West Coast Swing. And I want to show you why taking notes isn't all about just reading books, but also being able to apply it in your daily life. My five-step learning cycle consists of capturing, connecting, consolidating, cultivating, and communicating. So let's break each of these down. The first step is easy. Capturing means writing down the things that you find interesting. What resonates with you? What captures your attention? One of the concepts that I learned from the book Getting Things Done is to write things down so you can forget about them. This means you don't have to keep it in your short-term memory. So you can free up your brain to take in more information or process other things. I like to use Obsidian mostly because it's a fairly minimal note-taking app which means that I can literally open Obsidian and start typing whatever notes I want to without having to worry about where it's gonna go or how it's gonna be structured. My notes are personal, short, and quick. My objective with my Obsidian Vault is to have a personal knowledge base. So I'm a really big fan of you do you. My notes have a lot of personal reflections. So I'll write something down, talk about what I learned, why it's interesting, and then talk about any reflections that I have, like how I've seen it in my personal life or connections that I can make to other ideas and areas that I like. The idea of short notes also lends itself to a concept that I learned from the book, How to Take Smart Notes, called Atomic Notes. As a former software engineer, I'm a really big fan of single responsibility. Just like code, keeping notes atomic means that each note has a clear focus can be reused and is easier to maintain. To keep my notes quick, I try to start a lot of my notes from a temporary project folder. This can be named from a book I'm reading, an event I'm attending, or as the name implies, a project that I'm doing. This allows me to focus on writing the note and then save worrying about formatting, organization, or connections for later. But just capturing ideas isn't enough. If they just sit in the folder and go nowhere, I'm never going to use them. So when an active project ends, I'll go through each note in its folder and do two things. One, I'll link it to the source so I know where it came from. And two, I'll link it to existing ideas or add it to a bookmark. I use bookmarks a lot. I have three tiers to it. First is shortcuts. These are the files I go to all the time for my various workflows. The second is my current obsessions. These are topics I'm most interested in right now. And the third is my general index. These are notes that aren't really related to any of my workflows or current obsessions. My goal here is not to create the most organized system. It's to think about notes more deeply by connecting them to things I already know. As I start connecting ideas, I'll often notice patterns. Some notes are kind of like magnets and everything points to them. That's when I know it's time to consolidate. If I read a note with a ton of links, I won't easily be able to understand what's going on there. For example, I noticed that this note, Sugar Push, is now linked to a lot of notes. It's a sign that I need to refactor. In programming, that means changing the structure of the code without changing its function. Often, this is when I use the plugin Excalidraw. This allows me to make a mind map of what a note is all about and how I can break it up into smaller chunks. Most of the time, this is actually when I start thinking of frameworks or mental models to help me understand the idea better. The sugar push is a basic pattern in West Coast Swing, and lately I've been studying how all of the all-star and champion dancers have been performing it. But randomly memorizing 20 different versions of this step isn't going to make it easy for me to remember it as I dance. Now that I have several examples, I can group them into different categories so I can remember and practice them easier. Refactoring my notes and forming better mental models makes writing that much easier. A few years ago, I read a book called Storyworthy by Matthew Dix, and he recommends what he calls homework for life. Basically, at the end of every day, he writes a few keywords that will later remind him about 
one story that happened during that day. This idea for me has transformed over the years. I started off with one sentence stories and then it became one drawing per day. And then now my favorite version of it is one lesson per day. So basically at the end of every day, I'm going to try to write down a short lesson that I learned. On some days, this can actually be hard for me. So I have a list of where I can get ideas from. The first one is easy. It's anything that's really just top of mind for me. I also look at data view queries, like recently written notes or my most connected notes. Sometimes I'll use the random plugin and I have what I call my thinking inbox. It's a manually curated list of topics and ideas that I want to explore. Finally, I could also just write about my day. Normally, if I start writing about what happened during the day, I will remember something that's more interesting to write about. Writing helps me clarify ideas for myself, but sometimes I want to do more with it. I want to test it, share it, and build community through it. And this is where we land on my last step, communicate. More than just learning better, I find that this step for me is also about giving back. I think that teaching, even if it's in the most informal settings, is a way to bring people into your community. And I know that in my life, the accomplishments that I've had have come from both my hard work and also the sheer luck I had that there were people around me that were willing to teach. And in the exact opposite, a lot of the roadblocks that I've encountered both in my career and in my personal life have been because I couldn't find the right people to teach me the things I needed to learn. And so for me, when I couldn't find people to teach me, I had to build the system I needed. And now I just want to use it to be that teacher for somebody else. So if I could give back to the community, if I could be that person that younger me needed, then mission accomplished. So on that note, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you can't get enough of my Obsidian content, check out this playlist where I put all of my Obsidian videos and I try to share my journey in trying to learn more and learn better. That's it for now. See you next time. Bye. Oh, hey kitty cat. Kitty cat's here.